thank you for joining me once again where we're dealing with people who want to be wrong on the interwebs. Who is our willing contestant today? Today's contestant is one Cyrus Kambata, who runs a little YouTube channel which purports to be about assisting people to deal with their diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, as well as, you know, type three and other sorts of uh, diabetes that are being identified now as well. And of course, his uh, his uh, advice to people around how to deal with their disordered carbohydrate metabolism is to pour ever-increasing amounts of carbohydrates down their necks, which of course won't work, uh, as evidenced by the fact that Cyrus can't keep his own A1C below the level of about uh, 5.8 or so, heading towards six. Um, he also is, has a little business partner called Robbie, who likes to help out with the little channel that those two boys run collectively together. He too has A1Cs approaching approaching the level of six. Not good, is it, boys, at all? Uh, and Cyrus is also the bloke who has publicly stated on at least one occasion that were he able to create a magic pill that would deal with diabetes, he would not do so. Right. Now, you know, if there was a, a magic pill that I could take today that would eliminate type 1 diabetes, I, I swear to you, I would not take it. I would not take it because I don't want to get rid of type 1 diabetes. Um, of course not. That would destroy his bottom right-hand corner and his ability to fleece people and to give them disinformation and to indulge in dangerous malpractice and uh, contraindicated, uh, basically criminal misanthropy, which is what he and Robbie do over there at their little channel, which is all about diabetes, apparently. Anyway, let's deal with what Cyrus has got wrong on the interwebs this week. It's incredible. There's a bit to unpack here. So let's hear from Cyrus just a little bit, and then we'll unpack what he's got wrong and we'll correct it where it's wrong, which is um, pretty much everywhere. Spoiler. So buckle up, pay attention, stop throwing paper darts, get rid of that chewing gum down the back. Here it comes, Cyrus. Okay, so here's uh, two questions about uh, saturated and unsaturated fat. Okay, so clearly we find that saturated fat increases your cardiovascular disease risk. It increases your insulin resistance risk, and it increases your risk for type 2 diabetes. Right, yeah, so there's, there's a mouthful. There's quite a bit to unpack all in, all in one little sentence, um, a sentence in three parts, really. All three demonstrably, absolutely, unequivocally, not even just false, but lies. Complete and absolute lies. So what did Cyrus just say? Cyrus just said that saturated fat increases your risk for heart disease. Well, let's have a look at that assertion, shall we, just a little bit. Risk is a cause and effect statement. What it suggests is that if I moderate my behavior in some way, my individual odds, my risk of developing a condition, in this case they're talking about heart disease, is in some way affected by that change in my behavior. It suggests a cause and effect relationship between the intake of saturated fat and the incidence of heart disease. So there are several problems with that assertion. First of all, the first thing you learn in your first undergraduate degree, in the first half an hour of the first morning of it, if you're in a decent program, is association can not inform on causality. And what we're dealing with here is a, an assertion based around a purported association, in this case between the intake of saturated fat and heart disease. Well, let's check that out just momentarily, shall we? Let me give you an example of an association. The sale of ice creams at the beach resort you will find that to be highly correlated 
with reports of people reporting to the medical um, staff at that resort with sunburn-related issues on any given day. The more ice creams that are sold on any given day, the more cases of sunburn are going to report. There will be a strong, positive, and um, predictable relationship between those two variables. Okay, does that mean if I just stay away from the ice cream stand, I'm safe from sunburn? Is that what that means? No, Cyrus, it does not. There are a multitude, a myriad, a milieu of confounding cofactors and um, other uncontrolled degrees of freedom that play into the outcome of whether or not someone is going to develop heart disease. And even if there was a good, strong, positive relationship between the intake of saturated fat and heart disease, that still would not establish that there was a causal artifact there and that moderating my behavior by way of reducing my intake of saturated fat would have any impact whatsoever on the, my outcomes for heart disease over any period of time, short, medium, or long term. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. It's ice cream sales and sunburn. Okay? So that should be enough for anybody to dismiss that first part of your statement. If it's not, uh, number one, I don't know why it isn't enough for you. Association cannot establish causality. You must produce experimental, interventional research science to prove cause and effect. Failing that, you cannot make a cause and effect statement. No matter how much you'd like to, no matter how much your ideology requires you to do so, no matter how much you have to desperately try to find something wrong with saturated fat, because that's one of the very few ways that you can attempt to justify your ridiculous carb-addicted plant-based slop that you tell your people they should eat to cure their inability to metabolize carbohydrates. <laughs> Incredible. Um, it, it still isn't so. Saturated fat is not a causal artifact in the development of heart disease. So there is no causal artifact. We're looking at an association. Or are we, though? Because Cyrus has just said, by way of implying that there's an association, which he's therefore ascribing a causal artifact to falsely, is there actually an association between the intake of saturated fat and heart disease? Well, let's have a look at that relationship, shall we, and see whether that pans out. All right, so since 2010, there have been five major meta-analyses conducted on the reported intake of saturated fats in the diets of people and the incidences of various disease processes, including heart disease um, and diabetes, among other things. And let's have a look, shall we, at these five major meta-analyses, all with multi-million person years of follow-up um, to see whether or not there actually is a relationship between the reported intake of saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. It does have to be caveated that all these studies rely entirely upon respondent data. In other words, these are people who are asked, what are you eating? Uh, they fill in a dietary recall of their uh, nutrition and they submit that to the researchers. And the researchers take that at face value. They believe what is written down. And um, despite the fact that people tend to make errors about remembering what they've been eating, either that or they outright lie about it. 
but nonetheless, this is the relationship we've got. This is the only data we've got. There are no experiments to underpin any relationship here. And as such, this associative work is all there is. So let's see what it says. Let's see if there's a strong association between the intake of saturated fat as reported in heart disease. Well, the first of the studies that was undertaken was undertaken in 2010 by Siri Torino and her co-workers. And she has reported a meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies evaluating the association of saturated fat with cardiovascular disease. The results of that study were that saturated fat was not linked to an increased risk, it says, it's not risk, it's incidence, as described earlier, of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, or strokes, even among those with the highest intakes of saturated fat. No relationship between saturated fat and disease. Thank you, Patty Siri Torino and her co workers, 2010. Following that, in 2014, there was a study by Chowdhury and co workers, which was an association of dietary circulating and supplement fatty acids with coronary risk, it says. Once again, same issue. A systematic meta review and analysis. The results were the study did not find any link between saturated fat consumption and the risk of heart disease or death from any cause. Okay, thank you. The next study to highlight is by Schwab and others, also in 2014 entitled The Effect of the Amount and Type of Dietary Fat on Risk Factors for Cardiometabolic Risk Factors and Risk of Developing Type 2 Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases and Cancer, a systematic review uh, conducted in the Food and Nutrition Research Journal. Results. Consuming saturated fat, or reporting that you have, was not linked to an increased risk of heart disease or an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Hmm, okie dokie. So, the next year, 2015, Hooper and co-workers reported on their meta-analysis entitled Reduction in Saturated Fat Intake for Cardiovascular Disease which was a Cochrane um, systematic review, uh, which for some reason used to be quite widely respected. Not anymore, they've blown their credibility, unfortunately, but that's for another day. Uh, the results show that uh, the study found no effects of reducing saturated fat in heart attacks, strokes, or all-cause deaths. Hmm. Finally, and also in 2015, D'Souza and co-workers reported on their meta-analysis entitled Intake of Saturated and Trans Unsaturated Fatty Acids and Risk of All-Cause Mortality Cardiovascular Disease and Type 2 Diabetes, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Observational Studies. Their results indicated that Saturated fat was not linked with heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, or dying of any cause. So, one, two, three, four, five major meta analyses done in the last 12 years or so, all with multi million person years of follow up, all in agreement. There is no relationship between the reported intakes of saturated fat in the diets of people over multiple years and any incidence of heart disease or any disease of any kind or death of any kind or for any reason. Whoopsie daisy, Cyrus. That's unfortunate, isn't it? So there's the first part of your little sentence there. Absolutely decimated. No, saturated fat absolutely, patently, clearly, unambiguously, and unequivocally does not contribute to an increased risk of anything, let alone heart disease or death from any cause. Okay? So, no, Cyrus. Wrong. Okay. The next thing Cyrus said after his first comma was that the intake of saturated fat 
increased your risk of insulin resistance? Well, Cyrus, first of all, insulin resistance is an adaptive indicated utilitarian part of the overall normal functioning of human metabolism, the human metabolic system. Your cells are supposed to reject energy coming in when they are fully replete. There is a part of your metabolism which is referred to collectively as the Randall cycle, which explains why it is that people become insulin resistant, as you will call it, from time to time. It is an acute response. It is resolvable. It is resolvable rapidly by way of withdrawing all carbohydrates from the diet. Okay, by the way, um, the only time that insulin resistance really becomes chronic is when the acute insulin resistance keeps getting reactivated and reactivated and reactivated by, oh, I don't know, pouring five, six, and seven meals rich in carbohydrates down your stupid neck every day of your stupid life because some buffoon like Cyrus Cambetta told you that was a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's a bad idea. Uh, you are supposed to become insulin resistant under those circumstances because glucose in your cells at too high of a concentration is highly, highly cytotoxic. It's very, very destructive to cells. And as such, the doors of those cells are locked. And as such, the sacrificial lambs become the red blood cells and the epithelial cells, which are all replaceable on a much quicker turnaround time than the much more complex, much more important muscle cells, liver cells, etc. And so those cells protect themselves from that excess glucose, and they do that by locking the doors. It's what you would refer to as insulin resistance, Cyrus. Um, insulin resistance is not a pathological situation. It is not a disease process, and neither is it the, the cause of any disease process. It is a symptom of a disease process. You have the causality 180 degrees out of phase there. Sunshine, you need to go and school yourself up on this and stop, once you've finished doing that schooling, stop misinforming people about what it is that causes heart disease and uh, and uh, insulin resistance problems and issues with their carbohydrate metabolism. It is the intake of unnecessary and contraindicated carbohydrate in the diet. That's what does it. It's much, much worse, of course, when you mix that with fat as well, because a mixture of fat and carbohydrate is the most powerful known activator of the Randall cycle. Um, the second most powerful being carbohydrates alone. And as such, a, you know, very, very poor idea to mix carbohydrates and fats in your diet. I've covered that at length elsewhere. Do go and check it out. You'll learn a great deal from that. So no, the intake of a fat heavy diet will not predispose you to the risk of anything um, as a result of insulin resistance, the insulin resistance that will occur when you're replete with energy in the form of either carbohydrates or fats is indicated, is adaptive, is normal physiological function and is not pathological. So basically just once again, a complete lie, a complete misdirect, a complete look, oh, shiny thing from Cyrus Cambatter there, nothing to do with actual science or actual physiology or actual human nutrition requirements or human health. In any way, I mean, once again, I hate to harp back to it. Well, no, I don't. I enjoy harping back to it. Once again, if Cyrus Cambetta and his mate Robbie knew anything about how to control their blood sugars and their diabetic situation, then they would have done so. Neither one of them would show up on a repeat basis with A1C values at or very closely approaching 6. That shows poor control, boys. I'm sorry. There you go. You're done. So that was the second part there of Cyrus's little statement. And the third part, he said that an increase in saturated fat 
will increase your risk of diabetes. Well, no, wrong again, Cyrus. Because once again, remember you have that causality the wrong way around. You are ascribing the cause of, in this case you're talking about type 2 diabetes, the cause of that you are ascribing to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance occurs and that leads to diabetes type 2. No Cyrus can matter, it is the other way around. Type 2 diabetes is a pathological situation and the pathology, the problem, is elevated blood sugar. Not insulin not an inability to react to insulin. Elevated blood sugar is the disease process. It causes insulin resistance. Not the other way around, Cyrus. Completely, completely back end about face there. 180 degrees out of phase. Furthermore, you also do not have access to a single experimental piece of science where people have been locked in laboratories and experimented on under control and observation and discipline in a scientific manner. These studies do not exist, Cyrus. That is what's required to assert a cause and effect statement, and cause and effect is determined experimentally. You said risk. Risk is a cause and effect statement. So there you go. Class, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've got something from this presentation. There we have Cyrus Cambata making three statements in one sentence. All three total, absolute obfuscations, falsehoods, lies, misrepresentations of the facts, scientific misconduct of the highest order, misanthropy, and dangerous contraindicated misinformation to people who would be possibly justified in believing that Cyrus might have a clue of what he's talking about because he holds a PhD. Well, I'm sorry, he doesn't, clearly. Not the first clue of what he's talking about. Absolutely disgraceful, Cyrus. Give yourself several uppercuts and go back to school. Stop advising people on how to control their A1Cs on the basis that you have no idea how to control your own. Clearly, with your A1Cs, which, you know, six. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. And people who follow Cyrus's little channel, him and Robbie's channel, give yourselves a couple of uppercuts. Stop listening to these kind of buffoons. Stop listening to these liars. Stop being taken in by this nonsense. Have a look at the runs on the board. See whether or not these boys have their diabetes under control, because neither one of them do. Surely that should be enough for you to understand, therefore, that they are in no position to advise you on how to control yours. Especially considering Cyrus, as I said earlier, has publicly stated on more than one occasion that given the opportunity to produce a magic pill that would uh, cure diabetes, he would not take that opportunity up. He's all, about, he's all about making money from you. He's all about fleecing you. He's all about fooling you into emptying your pockets in the hope that you might have a longer life under his tutelage. Well, you won't. Sorry about that. Okay, those are the facts. Thank you for joining me. Join me again next time when someone else will be wrong on interwebs because there really is a lot of that going around, isn't there? Mm. See you then. Mm.